What's going on guys, Vic VB back with another Game Case Arcades video and I'm gonna answer one of the most common questions I get. Can you sell me just the SD card? So again, big shout out to you guys watching the videos. I know I've been slacking a little bit, I'm getting married so it's gonna be a little bit of a downside on this month at least, but uh, trying to make these videos out. Loving the comments, loving the likes, you guys are subscribing, keep them going guys, it really motivates me. But um, you know, a big shout out to you guys. I get the message all the time, Vic, can you sell me an SD card? Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a lot, but really the reason I'm making this is because I wanna show you exactly why it's almost impossible to just sell an SD card. So what I have right here is an RK1UP. It's already built. Uh, I was running a Pi 2 on this. For you guys, what we're gonna do right now, this is live, I didn't test this. It might work, it might not, I don't know. But I'm gonna put in right now a Pi 3 and um, we're gonna connect to the Zinmo, and I'm gonna show you exactly why you can't just buy an SD card. It has to be pre-configured. Again, you guys are liking the videos and commenting. Again, you guys want me to put a tripod mode so that you tripod. Um, so I will do a little bit of camera movement, but as far as talking, you guys let me know if you like the tripod so far. So I do get this question a lot. Vic, can you just sell me the SD card and I'll do the modifications and I'll wire up everything? The short answer is no. Um, some people might disagree with me. I personally, from my experience, I know for a fact that I cannot just sell you an SD card. Um, real reason why I'm making this video, I have people that message me and say, hey Vic, I just want the SD card. You know, um, I need help flashing the drive and I don't know how to put the games in and I just need help with the SD card. But what a lot of people don't understand is that you have to program the SD card to number one, most importantly, is to read your controller. Um, for example, if you have a Zinmo, and you're gonna use it as the RK one up, like you're gonna do a Zenmo mod, like I did. I have to program your SD card to read the to read a Zenmo. But also, what people understand is that the Zenmo is configured in a way that button one is button one, button one is button two. But if you put your Zenmo as button one as button four, or the best one, for example, is like your start button is button six, but I configure it as button five, it's not gonna work. So again, in, in a short answer, no. To me personally, I cannot just sell you an SD card. It's, it's gonna lead to you calling me and me being on the phone with you for like three hours to figure out how to reconfigure it. So again, here is our RK1 up. Originally a uh, Pi 2 running inside of this. That's my Pi 2. I'm not gonna touch the original hardware in this, but basically I have my mini NES killer. This is a Pi 3 128 gigabyte SD card. Basically, again, I'm trying to simulate if I sold you that, let's just say I sold you the SD card. Let's, let me just show you and prove to you that you can't just buy an SD card. So right now, as far as a USB, we are running the Zinmo. I get this a lot. Vic, I followed your guide. Can you just sell me the SD card? I have the Zinmo. I'm gonna power this on. Never tested this. And again, I'm gonna show you why you can't simply just buy an SD card. Again, the biggest thing I have to understand, especially with the Zinmo, and I'm gonna show you the screens and all that. I mean, you could kind of think of this as a tutorial on how you could configure your controller. Um, the only issue is that it might work and it might not work. Uh, I was literally on the phone with a guy named Ricky, uh, actually a friend of George's. Uh, he bought an SD card off of Etsy, and I was on the phone with him for about three hours trying to configure his, uh, his uh, card. It's funny because I went to his house and we, I fixed it. Apparently he powered down, turned off the Pi, rebooting the Pi, all of a sudden it erased all of his configuration. So keep that in mind. Again, this right now, here we go. I'm gonna talk behind the camera, but the biggest thing right now, right now we have an issue. I'm getting no audio from my SD card. Again, I'm not playing games. I have no audio, I have my auxiliary wire hooked up. But again, I'm gonna show you why it doesn't work that way. But let's just see real quick. Ah, the Zinmo looks pretty good. Oh, there we go. So here we go. So check this out. Usually I configure my button one as enter. This is actually reading button one as back. If I do button two, nothing. Button three, nothing. Button four, oh. Button four here is my enter. This is my back. So right now a customer is gonna be upset because usually I have this as enter and back when I send out my pictures. Enter back, letter up, letter down. So right now we already have a dilemma. This is my enter button now. 
I'm gonna enter again. Let's actually do Street Fighter. Let me see if my letter works. So this is usually my letter button. My letter button is working. You can see here, I'm gonna zoom in on the title. But basically D, N, D, E, F. Yeah, this is working. We're gonna go to Super Street Fighter. Again, no edits, no cuts on this. Talking behind the camera. Hopefully I'm able to keep the camera straight while I do this. But again, we're gonna go to Super Street Fighter real quick. Again, I did not program this SD card to read a Zinmo. We're gonna enter apparently, because my enter button's here. And again, the big issue right now is we're gonna see if the coin button is gonna work and if the start button's gonna work. So here we go, game is loading. Let it go through its warning signs. I'm gonna put my coin. No, look, look, see? I'm gonna get an email from you guys. Hey Vic, my coin button doesn't work. And look at this, none of my buttons are working. Down here, oh, one of these are, are my coins. So again, here is our RK1 op. Originally a uh, Pi 2 running inside of this. That's my Pi 2. I'm not gonna touch the original hardware in this, but basically I have my mini NES killer. This is a Pi 3 128 gigabyte SD card. Basically again, I'm trying to simulate if I sold you that, let's just say I sold you the SD card. Let's, let me just show you and prove to you that you can't just buy an SD card. So right now, as far as a USB, we are running the Zinmo. I get this a lot. Vic, I followed your guide. Can you just sell me the SD card? I have the Zinmo. I'm gonna power this on. Never tested this. And again, I'm gonna show you why you can't simply just buy an SD card. Again, the biggest thing I understand, especially with the Zinmo, and I'm gonna show you the screens and all that. I mean, you could kind of think of this as a tutorial on how you could configure your controller. Um, the only issue is that it might work and it might not work. Uh, I was literally on the phone with a guy named Ricky, uh, actually a friend of George's. Uh, he bought an SD card off of Etsy, and I was on the phone with him for about three hours trying to configure his, uh, his uh, card. It's funny because I went to his house and we, I fixed it. Apparently he powered down, turned off the Pi, rebooting the Pi, all of a sudden it erased all of his configuration. So keep that in mind. Again, this right now, here we go. I'm gonna talk behind the camera, but the biggest thing right now, right now we have an issue. I'm getting no audio from my SD card. Again, I'm not playing games. I have no audio. I have my auxiliary wire hooked up. But again, I'm gonna show you why it doesn't work that way but let's just see real quick ah the zen mo looks pretty good oh there we go so here we go so check this out usually i configure my button one as enter this is actually reading button one as back if i do button two nothing button three nothing button four oh button four here is my enter this is my back so right now a customer is going to be upset because usually I have this as enter and back when I send out my pictures, enter back, letter up, letter down. So right now we already have a dilemma. This is my enter button now. I'm going to enter again. Let's actually do Street Fighter. Let me see if my letter works. So this is usually my letter button. My letter button is working. You can see here, I'm going to zoom in on the title, but basically D, N, D, E, F. Yeah, this is working. We're gonna go to Super Street Fighter. Again, no edits, no cuts on this. Talking behind the camera. Hopefully, I'm able to keep the camera straight while I do this. But again, we're gonna go to Super Street Fighter real quick. Again, I did not program this SD card to read a Zinmo. We're gonna enter apparently, because my enter button's here. And again, the big issue right now is we're gonna see if the coin button is gonna work and if the start button's gonna work. So here we go, game is loading. Let it go through its warning signs. I'm gonna put my coin. No, look, look, see? I'm gonna get an email from you guys. Hey Vic, my coin button doesn't work. And look at this. None of my buttons are working. Down here. Oh, one of these are, are my coins. This, which is like button 11. This right is basically button 11. Uh, whereas this, it should really should be up here. So again, let me see if my star button works. Nope, nope. Not even my player twos. One of these. Oh, my, my go 
activated it. Let's see if real quick, let's see if our, our punches are here. Again, no BS. I'm not lying to you. This is an SD card. This is for the mini NES killer. I originally have this really wired up to read a game pad. So left and right is usually getting my butt kicked. Let's see up and down. That's good. I wish I could start a two player game, but I can't, I can't do a two player game because the button's not configured, right? I'm getting my butt kicked, but I want to see the punches. Oh, look at that. My button two is a kick. Look at this. Let it reload. Again, no BS, Zinmo connection. So again, Vic, can you just sell me an SD card? No, because now I have to be on the phone with you and I have to fix this. Look at this, button two is my kick. Button three is another kick. Button four is a punch, which should really be a kick. Another punch at the bottom. And there you have it. Now the biggest thing, watch this. I can't exit now. I won't be able to, oh, I did exit. It looks like I can actually press start and select. So my, my controls are set up for start and select. So again, right now, we're getting kind of lucky because I'm actually able to navigate the screen. Uh, Ricky's arcade that we did, we couldn't even navigate the screen. We couldn't even navigate a track mode. So again, if you're gonna buy an SD card, you gotta keep this in mind. It's not easy. It's not an easy plug and play. Again, apparently on this one here, my coin button is this and my go button is my start. Again, I had this NES killer set up for the SNES joysticks. I could actually do start and select here and it will exit. So we got lucky. Again, my button one here is back. So again, here's your issue guys. Can you buy an SD card? Yeah, you can, but get ready for the headache. Some of these, um, for example, the Pi 3, um, that's what I want to test, but the Pi 3 is known for the Zinmo can't detect the player two. So the biggest thing to help you out, I guess you could figure out this as a tutorial part of it. You will always forever need a wired keyboard. Always have a wired keyboard. You could do a wireless keyboard, but I've had troubles. Always want a wired keyboard handy. For example, this right here is a track mode. A track mode most of the times, like for Ricky's up and down, if I press left, his screen went up. So a track mode settings weren't configured right. So normally I have my settings button, which is the configuration button set to start which luckily I know now my start button's here. This is my configuration button. And basically now my controls, I'll be able, oh, see, <laughs> this is the back. Again, I could go into controls. And then once you're in controls, then you could adjust everything such as your back and your forth. Okay. I'm not gonna do this because again, this is really set for a, um, an SNES controller. But right now, real quick, just to get you into it, you have to go into a track mode or settings and you have to go back into emulation station. Again, no BS, you literally see it. There's a dilemma right now. We can't get player two to start. You're gonna call me again. Can you buy an SD card? Can I sell you an SD card? No, I wouldn't even want to do that. Unless the only real way, I mean, again, I'm gonna show you when you'll understand once I bring you into it, but the only real way to really get it down packed, but you have to tell me the exact numbers is you have to tell me what button is this Zenmo reading? If this is button one, but on your Zenmo it's button six, you have to tell me that. And then that's how you make sure it works. So again, we're gonna boot, it, we're gonna boot into emulation station right now. Okay, so now check this out. So this exactly happened to Ricky. Check this out. So this menu right here is emulation station. Emulation station and a track mode are two different menu setups. So check this out again. Remember emulation station, my a track mode, this was back, this was enter. Now watch this, if I actually do my back works, this is actually randomized. This button randomizes everything, but actually my enter is now button two. So now it's different. You're gonna call me and say, Vic, a track mode and then uh, uh, emulation station, why is this backwards? That's just how you configure it. For example, my start button was here before and I have um, the menu set up to press the start button, right? This was before we were even in track mode. Watch this, if I press start button on this, I get that main menu, which is what I need to configure our inputs. So again, a track mode and emulation station are two different menus. So again, you have to configure the settings on this and the settings on a track mode, two different menus. So if you do get this, you can't get the start button to work to bring up the main menu. You have to plug in a USB keyboard. Basically, once you get into the USB keyboard, your up and down arrows will work. You have to go into configure input, which I just went to back, but basically you have to go into configure input You'll do yes, right? 
one gamepad, you're gonna hold down, Zen mode connected. Now watch this, see, it's gonna go, you gotta put in your inputs, up, down, left, right. Now here's the thing I'm talking about. My start button, right, is button six on my Zen mode. My select button is the coin button, button seven. Uh, for the SNES joystick style, I always load up. No lie, I actually have this, I always do this. I do it so many times, but I keep forgetting. But, we load up that B A Y X, right? So now A B X Y L R. So again, if you look carefully right here, see? Like it's reading my button three as button two. My right shoulder, which is button six, is reading button five. We're gonna skip all these. So basically to skip these, you just hold down a button. And again, this is the biggest thing. If you don't have your buttons really configured like how I have it, buying an SD card is not gonna work. You're gonna call me and then I need to guide you. The worst part is when I have to guide you, you don't have a USB keyboard. It's, it's impossible, it's physically impossible to do anything on this. And now we're back, see? Again, configure the input and then I'm not gonna do it again. But now real quick, just to show you again what I mean is we're gonna go into, that's one thing. So you have to configure the settings in your, your menu, emula emulation station menu and a track mode. Then you also have to go into here and do retro arc. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean when we do retro arc. This way I can show you exactly, this is what needs to be done. You go into retro arc, you go into settings. And again, like retro arc now is like kind of flipped. So your enter is like not the same. See like my enter's over here for some reason on button three. We're gonna go to input, again, look, button three. And I'm gonna go into user one. Right, now here we go, this is exactly what I mean. Device index Zinmo. For the Pi 3, right now, yeah, see this? This is not gonna recognize my player two. You do have to do a coding, which I'll do in another video. You have to code this. On this line, you're gonna let this scroll. There's a parentheses number one here. Right now, the Zinmo will not work. Because again, I didn't personally, I didn't configure it, but it won't work. Your player two won't work. But again, just to show you real quick, B button is button two. So again, that is wrong. This is wrong right here. Button two on the Zen mode, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Button two, zero, one, two. It's reading my B button as that button. That's wrong. My B button should be here, button four, which is really button three. Again, the big thing you have to remember about the Zinmo is that your first button is a zero. It does count button one as zero. So again, button B on the SNES, it's foggy here, whatever, but the button B is my yellow, so that's really this button here. But button B, the way I program it, is button two because of the SNES controller. So again, that is why when we tested Street Fighter, it didn't work. That's exactly why. You have to configure these, you have to reconfigure it. So if you're gonna buy an SD card, it's not gonna work out of the box. You have to keep that in mind. Start button, button nine is my admin button, really. Um, so I'm actually gonna take a picture of this and I'm gonna load up my Pi 2 just to show you because some people might be confused. So now real quick, bought my original Pi 2 back and check this out. If you remember from before, this is my attract mode menu on my Pi 2. On a Pi 3 before, my other one, this was the start menu, right? To bring up the configuration, nothing. On my attract mode, my start button brings that up. Again, my back, if I go into enter is my first button. And again, we are all ready to go. I'm gonna bring you guys real quick into RetroArch, just to show you real quick. I'm gonna go into RetroArch, I'm gonna press enter, just to show you real quick, player one, and I'm gonna probably flash the other one real quick, but if I go into settings, input, again, I don't really remember it because we shot it, but right here, take a look at this. My B button is the 3076. Again, I know for a fact the L button was like button two or something like that. I'm gonna show real quick a side by side. And there you have it, real quick, just to show you the Zinmo. 
This right here is a Pi 2, so this won't show me, will it? It does. Look at that. See the number 1? That's what I'm talking about. You have to code your Pi 3. Zinmo, you have to go into the RetroArch menu and let this fly through. Once you see that, you're good to go. If I do right now go into my US, my player 2, let this slide through, number 2, this set, and perfect. Again, just to show you real quick, we're not lying. I'm not here to lie to you. This is how you have to work with an SD card image. But again, the biggest thing right now is that the Zinmo on this one right here, because of the coding, I don't have the coding here. It won't recognize player two. That's something that I have to do. Again, you have to make sure that you have to tell me what button is your A button. What button is your left button, your left trigger, which is up here. That's the thing. You have to keep that in mind. That is why you cannot simply buy an SD card no bs people this is facts uh if i go into right now the the main reason that you're getting the oh shit look at that i messed it up <laughs> well this right here we're actually not going to we're not gonna save this if i could exit out yes i could we're gonna quit retroarch i'm not gonna save there you have it people again this is why you cannot just simply buy an sd card i hope this video helps again you cannot do it it's a living proof right here. You have to reconfigure everything. Even with me reconfiguring the main menu, configure, you still have to go into, normally RetroArch does um, read it and it does go into auto mode, but I personally always go into RetroArch and I've, I always customize all my buttons no matter what. I always go into that. So again, emulation station will load up if your card does have a track mode you'll go into a track mode the other thing that you notice the um our speakers weren't working you have to go into audio which i don't remember how to enter but nope that's back see that now we're all now we're all no see ever since now that i switched it like i did the configure my enter button's here now see that it's a nightmare people i'm telling you right now it's a nightmare you have to now go into audio you have to switch it to headphones press enter i'm gonna go back and now, again, see, this before was back. Now it's not. Crap. This is enter now. So now we're gonna go, we're gonna go into it again. Now that we did the, the menu reconfigure. Now we gotta, that's my enter. And now, we now have audio to this. Now it does work. Well, that's going into a track mode again. You could buy an SD card, but you have to remember that there has got to be some configuration on your end. And for somebody that's not tech savvy, it is a nightmare. And also the biggest thing while that boots up, the biggest thing I suggest when you do your pies is whenever or whichever way you put your USB in, you will forever want to keep the USB like that. Always keep it. Right now the Zinmo's on port one the biggest thing to remember is that whenever you do with the pi always remember where you put your usb so my zinmo is on port one okay if i take the zinmo out and put it on port three it might be a nightmare uh you know sometimes it's not but most of the time it's a nightmare it might not even recognize the zinmo because it's so used to port one again emulation station this was entered this was back right i want to play some arcade Ooh. So my enter worked. My back is actually a scrolling thing. It's going through random. My back is here. Again, yeah, for somebody like that, they're going to be like, oh, my back now switch. A track mode is a whole different button configuration. So you do need to get either a USB keyboard or again, for me, it's the start button. But remember on emulation station, this is my start button. Apparently on a track mode, this is my start button so again it's all about how and what button and what you have the zinmo configured to again once you go into here you go into controls enter and then from here for example you'll click your select go into it and then you add an input and then from there so for example right now see my input is reading joystick zero button three so 
zero, one, two, three. That's why my enter is here. If I go back, my back is reading button zero, joystick zero. So joystick zero is one, player two is joystick two, right? So there you have it, button zero, that's my zero. So you have to reconfigure this. You, had, you would remove the input and put it back. Again, for the people that think it's just easy, one, two, three, it's not, you could do it. I'm not saying that you can't do it. So, I mean, again, can I buy an SD card from you, Vic? But you gotta get ready to call me and I have to go through the phone for like three hours. Again, it happened to Ricky. I went and I fixed his image. I guess he turned off the Pi. I don't know what happened, but the Pi, the SD card didn't save it. So he called me, I'm there to help, I'm okay to help out. It's just, we were literally on the phone for like three hours to reconfigure it back. So again, his image, the uh, emulation station menu worked, but his attract mode menu didn't work. So depending on how you have everything set up and how you have everything wired up, it could change. Uh, the real reason I bring this up and I'm trying to think of a way to bring up like a whole like um, talks, kind of thing. I got a message on let go. Somebody messaged me on let go. I had somebody message me on let go. It was, a, it was a lady. She's like, I just want an SD card image. And what made me laugh and she's like, I'm a computer technician, so I know how to do everything. I just need the SD card image. And I was like, no, you don't understand. It's not just an SD card image. You have to reconfigure it. And then she goes, oh, I watched your videos. I have a Zinmo. I'm like you could have a Zinmo, but did you wire it? Like how Game Room Solutions card wires it? And uh, she goes, I don't know, I, I don't remember. And I'm like, you, you can't do that. Again, I'm here to help you. Can you buy an SD card image made and just reconvert it? Yes, you can, you could do it. Just like how Ricky did it, he paid about 50 bucks. Pretty nice image actually, 18,000 games on 128 gigabyte drive, amazing. But the amount of stress he had to make it work, not to mention the Pi 3 has a very known issue about the Zinmo not recognizing player two joystick. You have to actually go in to the command line, you have to program the command line for something and you have to add two files. ETA Prime shows it, you follow it and it works exactly it, but he doesn't really show you how to do the command line thing. I know how to do it, I'll probably post a video next time, but it's not that easy. I'm not saying that to be an asshole. People like literally, this woman messaged me and she's like, stop being an asshole, I just wanna buy an SD card. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, if she never contacted me though, but I said fine, but don't call me for help because you just call me an asshole. I'm not an asshole. This is real facts. I know for a fact, if you buy an SD card image and let's just say you even have, for example, I was gonna do it here. So now like, for example, real quick, USB controllers, right? I get my controllers from Vilrose. It's an Amazon company, really cool guys. Uh, they get the, they sent me like the NES classic uh, box. This right here is a USB SNES controller, right? Now, when I plug this into the Pi, the Pi recognizes as USB controller one. One time I got uh, the, another set of USB controllers, same exact company, same exact kind of look, but when I plugged it into the Pi, it actually read as an SNES controller number one. So instead of it reading USB controller one, it read as SNES controller. So again, uh, I, uh, same thing with the N64. Uh, the N64, when I do my um, mini NES killers, uh, the N64 is actually labeled an N64 wired USB number one. So depending on where you get your controller from and how they name it and how the company does it, it is not easy to simply just buy an SD card. I don't care, you could comment in the section below and tell me it's easy or yeah, I could buy one and you could reconfigure it. You can, believe me, you can. Anything's possible, but get ready for the headache. The biggest thing I stress to everybody, go out and get yourself a USB direct wired uh, keyboard. You need the keyboard to navigate it. Normally my track mode on most of track modes, there is no button to bring up the configuration menu. To bring up this menu right here, this one, there's no button. If you go into the configuration menu and try to bring up that button, you must press tab. There's no USB controller button, there's no Zinmo button. You need to press tab to get into this. So you definitely need a wired keyboard. You need it, get ready. Again, the only real reason I'm making this is because I'm getting the questions. Vic, the, the image is cool, it looks good. But again, in all honesty, I'm, I want to help. Uh, I like to help people call me. You can message me on Letgo, you can message me on Instagram. I'm there to help, people know I'm there to help. But yeah, you know, the biggest thing is like, when you think I'm lying to you, I'm not lying to you. Again, 
real quick to conclude this quick video can you buy an sd card i say no again you could buy one but get ready for the headaches on that note vic vp game case arcades i have a very special video they're gonna make right now after this video you're gonna see it soon got an order in for ebay we're bringing it back to the original how i made my game case arcades name we have a ebay order for a game case arcades portable arcade i'm going to show you that we actually started building it let me show you that in the next video